Portugal's socialist government have won a surprise majority after a snap election was called in December. Now, I will get to why this may not be as great of a story as it may appear for those on the left. But before I get there, let me play for you a bit of the speech here from Prime Minister Antonio Costa. Uma maioria absoluta não é o poder absoluto. Não é governar sozinho. É uma responsabilidade acrescida. E governar é governar com e para todas e todos os portugueses. E assim esta maioria será uma maioria de diálogo com todas as forças políticas que representam na Assembleia da República os portugueses na sua pluralidade. All right, so the Socialist Party in Portugal is a center-left party, and this election was triggered after the parties to the left of the Socialist Party would not support their budget bill. Which gets me to why this may not be as great of a story as it may sound on the surface. Because when you go back and look at this story I covered in uh, November, Portugal's Socialist Party passes amazing pro-worker reforms. A lot of that is likely due to the pressure they had from the left. So in November, they passed reforms including making it illegal for your employer to message you after work hours making uh, employers have to pay for increased expenses for working from home and banning employers from monitoring workers at home. All fantastic reforms. But would the Socialist Party have passed those? Again, a center-left party. Would they have passed those if they didn't have to work with the parties to the left of them? Because in this recent election, Portugal or the, the, the Socialist Party was able to win by cutting votes from those parties to their left. So a little more on that here from uh, CBC in terms of who uh, gained and who lost in this election. So the center-right Social Democrats came a distant second at below 30% of the vote, according to provisional results, against the Socialist around 42%. The far-right Chega emerged as the third largest parliamentary force, making a big leap from just one seat in the previous legislature to at least 11. And the two far-left parties paid the price, losing more than a half of their seats, according to exit polls. So this is why I think it's very likely this party now will no longer have to work to the left of where I guess they normally would be. Because they don't need the votes from the left-wing parties, they don't need the left bloc or the communists anymore. So they will likely now govern more to the center as opposed to having to work with those left-wing parties. So that um, alliance between those three parties was known as the, uh, the Geronza, or Improvised Solution, and a final collapse when the communist and left bloc joined right-wing parties in rejecting the budget bill after weeks of tense negotiations. Costa, who has served as prime minister since 2015, had accused his erstwhile Geronza partners of behaving irresponsibly by voting against his budget. And in hindsight, maybe they should have supported it. Now, if they didn't support the budget, then they don't support the budget. But now they have less power because of this election. Now, a little more here. So despite the seemingly unstable nature of his minority government, Costa has won plaudits for turning around Portugal's post-crisis economy, reversing unpopular austerity measures, and overseeing one of the most successful COVID vaccination programs in Europe. And by the way, he did that while having to work with parties to his left. So now you see the makeup of the parties here. I'm not sure if this is a clear vision of it, but here you go. So 117 uh, socialists, you have 76 social democrats, so that's the center-right party. Then you have the communists and the left bloc losing support, losing half their support, down at 6 and 5. One last thing, just to show you, Portugal has done a really good job at vaccinating their entire country. So this New York Times piece from back in October, in Portugal there's virtually no one left to vaccinate. So they have done a great job at this now. Due to Omicron, they are still seeing a massive rise in COVID-19. But in terms of the actual death rate, it is still, of course, below uh, where it would be otherwise if they didn't have this sort of vaccination rate. So Portugal has done you know, a fairly good job when it comes to COVID, when it comes to worker reforms during this pandemic. We're going to see now how this majority government, if they operate the same or if they now move a little more to the right of where they've been governing.